Cause Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective Smear faces Lord, they hate to hear your message Though I'm geared with your protection Your armor that I've been blessed with No stressing When I'm trying to teach them all your lessons They looking at me crazy Like I got a weird perspective All right Thank you guys. Welcome for, to another episode of The Weird Perspective. Today, we are going to be continuing on in our discussion talking about Christian dating. And today, just like I had last time, I had the fellas. Today, I have some young ladies with me. And then I got a special guest, my amazing wife. So uh, to help me out, you know, guard me and stuff like that, make sure I'm on the right track, pinch me or something if I ask the wrong question. You know how I go. But, um, so we're going to, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves. We're just going to go around. Y'all know who I am, so I'm the same thing. It's all about uh, the ladies that we have with us today. And so without further ado, would you guys introduce yourselves? So I want you guys to just let them know your name, where you're from, and then why you think this conversation on Christian dating is needed. Do we start with Katie? All right. Um, my name's Katie. And I'm originally from Wisconsin, but I've lived in Chicago for almost seven years now. Mm. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and um, why is this? I think this conversation is, I don't know if it's necessary, but it's helpful because I feel like we all want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey y'all my name is ariel i'm from chicago west side but i also have roots in the south side so sometimes i like struggle but i could see the mixture not you period mm -hmm. with your loyalty yeah <laughs> okay we'll talk about that later um why do i think that we need to have this conversation um one because these dating streets is it's getting ghetto um and i think for me like me and my friends we're always having these conversations surrounding dating but also and i think the men are definitely having sad conversations about like their perspectives on dating but i don't think a lot of it is rooted in like biblical truth so mm. it's important okay yeah. um my name is mary ann and i am from I guess still suburbs, but all the way up north, close to like Six Flags. Gurney? Um, I'm not, yeah, to the west of Gurney, Round Lake Beach okay, is where I'm okay. from. But yeah. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, why I think this is important. I think it's important because, like Katie had said, like people want to talk about this and it's always good to hear from other people. I feel like we're still a young married couple. So it's like, I still remember very cl clearly the dating scene, but then I'm also married, right? So it's like this nice middle ground of like mm -hmm. still fresh in my memories, mm -hmm. but also new perspective now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, I asked my wife because she has single friends, and I'm pretty sure you. I hear used to have and more, like that. and I and it's funny. Because I wish I still had as many as I did when I was more worldly. Because now I'm like, I could just get so many folks married. Just, just pair these people up. But, like, not so much anymore. Um, but my name is Tawatha. I'm from Chicago. Um, and I do think the conversation is necessary because, you know, um, the aim is always the same, right? You know, uh, the Bible, and, and you know, says to be fruitful and multiply. Um, God loves marriage. He, and it's like, you know, how do, how do, we, how do we get there? And our, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ are struggling out here in these streets because the world is, is so much worldlier than it's ever been. Um, and how do you how do you enjoy which I mean, Christian dating is, is supposed to be this long, drawn out thing. But like, man, like we can't, you know, but you got to do it, you know, for a certain amount of time before you can get to that altar. Um, and so, you know, and I want to go to more weddings. Ooh. What about me? Come on, I you feel know. Like when we first got saved, there were a lot of people getting married. And we'll, get into that. we'll, we'll get into that, but That's the thing. I think yeah. there was a lot more people getting married. Uh, I feel like man, it was at least four or five people getting married every year when we first became Christians. This is back in 2011, so there's definitely um, there's a been decline. A culture shift. Yeah, and like you, you know, we're supposed to stand strong at the church and not let the culture infiltrate, and I think that it has. 
I think that's mm. what I think that's what's happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my first question for you ladies is, if you know any, what does the Bible say about dating and relationships? <laughs> we gotta learn. <laughs> Anyone can go. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't know if what about dating per se, because I don't necessarily think. What we think of dating is what was just say happening back then, context wise. But at least relationship wise, I think there is you kind of touched on it, right? Like God loves marriage, and mm-hmm. He says, you know, be fruitful, multiply, and everything. When God talks about Himself and the Son, and just our relationship with Him, a lot of the analogies are marriage, mm-hmm. and they're relational. all relational, right? So there, there is that aspect of it where it's like, okay, it's obviously a thing, and it's important. Um, but the dating piece, I feel like it's we have it has evolved drastically because back then, it, again, it was more of that arranged marriage type of situation. Mm-hmm. People were a lot younger, and it was just this is somebody within your tribe and people group, and you just got nice, married. Nice and simple. Yeah, mm-hmm. take, us, take us back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? The one that I feel like early on that they kind of used to drill in my head. When I was like real young in my faith was don't awaken love before it's time. Come on. (laughs) And I still sometimes, I'm not going to say sometimes, but I feel like that's a scripture that I kind of try to stay grounded in too. Um, But also have that peace where like, okay, God, I do desire marriage. I still want to date, but what does that look like, like with you? Um, And so just praying, like, is this a season where I can be dating? Should I be dating? And, like, if I'm not to be dating right now, then God, like, help me to prepare in this waiting season and not be idle while I'm waiting. Um, And then also, um, love is patient. Love is kind. So when you're looking for someone or you're waiting to be found, like, what are those attributes that you're looking for? Like, do they display the fruits of the Spirit? Are they loving, patient, kind? Do they show meekness? Um, are they easily angered? Or, um, do they keep a record of, you said you was going to call me at 9, but it's 10.02 okay. and you haven't right. called me. Like, okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are like the top two that I feel like that's like right down my head. I had mm-hmm. forgot about Don't Awaken Love. I'm going to put that in my crap teenagers. I'm going to put that in my you know, storage that? for later. I think it's like Song, Song Solomon. Song Solomon. Yeah. Oh, he I says it multiple that. times. Yeah, he says it multiple times. Okay. Yeah. Christians be scared of reading. But Song that Solomon. that book is cray cray. <laughs> um, <laughs> One of my thoughts. From. I think we should preach on. I've heard a few people. No, we really should because yeah. anyways. Gotta dismiss the children. You know <laughs> what? <laughs> he was being real poetic <laughs> up in there. <laughs> <laughs> um... Ruth is like one of the only ones. I mean, we talk about Ruth all the time as women, but like she low key didn't get set up by like her dad with Boaz. Mm -hmm. Know what I'm saying? Like Naomi was like, go lay at his feet Mm -hmm. at his bed. (laughs) Like she was, she was kind of like that, that mom that's like, go talk to him. You know what I'm saying? So like, she kind of, she was, she's like one of the only examples where she wasn't like set up or arranged. She literally was like, no, I probably, I definitely need to get married in this society. But then also like, oh, this is actually a good man. I'm going to go for him. Like she went for him. So that's one of my thoughts. She presented herself to him. She really like, did. I'm right here. What's up? Right. Yeah. In a respectful manner, of course. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he woke up and he was like, what the? <laughs> 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 but other than that. <laughs> Thank you, God. Yeah. So, Thank you for what you were presenting. So on that note, right, I'm going to go out of order of what I had originally here. But so with what you just said about Ruth, is it okay and should men and women be flirting in church and making themselves known? If it's to a single man. <laughs> right, obviously, <laughs> like, the, 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 there, the, the there. single. Is it holy flirting? So someone, a, a really funny Christian comedian, made a whole um, series on holy flirting. And it was like, she was like, how you doing, my brother? You know, I um I saw you at the altar, and I, I, was, I came in a great right? You know, like you know what I'm she saying. Oh! So, so, <laughs> so, all y'all saying that it's okay? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Absolutely. And so what is that? What is some do's and some don'ts? Okay. You know, like what? speak to the men. Like let the men know what. No, what's but like I start with you, young ladies. So hold on. I had a conversation with a couple boys at my church, and one of the <laughs> right, and one of them said, "It's not church is not an appropriate place to flirt." What? And that got me a little bit. He was like, "I don't, I don't want to put him on blast." Do like I that. know this young man? Yeah, don't put him on blast. Don't say his yeah. name, but do but I know? But I like, but I like the thought of that. That or that thought is interesting. I don't know if I fully agree in it because yeah, this is where we meet people. Don't be at the altar flirting. Well, but, I mean, I mean, but like, I do like the the thought. I it's interesting, and I'm still like, what is that? I word? want to clarify a question. Does he mean yes. like Mullinating. church people? Is not that like no, church, like the location. The location. I kind of and agree the time Sunday mornings. I. I do agree in this aspect of like there's a reverence, right? Like right. it's a sanctuary, right? That is a place where it is holy, right? And so I do understand that aspect of it. But I think like in the lobby, outside, I was just about the after, parking lot, okay, right? on the steps, like, in the coffee, in the coffee bar, <laughs> no, not in the middle of the, not in the, the middle of the sermon. Huh? It was like, right. and you get an amen. You're like, amen. Walk her to the car. <laughs> No, you clearly not focused on the word right now. After service, right, after right. the tears and boogers have been wiped away, okay. you know, and you know, in, in the co- you know, most of these trendy, bigger um, churches have a little coffee bar. Like my husband said this, he was like, "You look very beautiful today," you know, give a look one of those. And I'm, I'm the same way. I'm kind of two minds about it. I think I'm more, you know, more for it than against it. But obviously, you know, there's he he gave some examples. I was like, tell, "Tell me what you're talking about right now, sir," because he was like, "Why these brothers ain't, you know?" Da-da-da. I'm like, "What are you, what are you talking about?" Why not walking up to? Yeah. If you're interested in a person, What's why not guy? walk up and say something? Yeah. Well, what they say? Respectfully. And, and this goes without saying. Everything that I'm going to say, do it respectfully. Don't be yeah. weird. Don't be creepy. But yeah. what might be weird to you might be okay. But just respectfully walk up to somebody and introduce yourself and say, hey, how you doing? What's your name? And then go from there. Don't just be in the background. Like, you looking at them and they be like, what you looking at mm-hmm. Looking away and being all timid. Like. Go for, go for it. Yeah. Like, if somebody I like, don't know if like the guys are being timid though. I think they're just so. Please tell me I how think they're, they're being, just I'm not interested. Why? What do you think they're being? I think they're just not interested. They're not aware of what's going on. I think it's not even in their view. So my yeah. husband really. He Ooh. said okay. He, I kinda, so <laughs> so that kind of go along with something he said. He was like, he's like, babe, it's like a middle school dance opposite ends of the, of the slam of like they're like not right like, oh, y'all grown right <laughs> you know what I'm, y'all you single cool let's go like right. so i i watch people right at the I right. Know, program that we do i want no dudes popping up like hey, what's up but, <laughs> you, well, you, said, my, you said i want to well, well, <laughs> well we well we uh well we there right I, i'm looking at guys and i can see them looking at certain people oh that's good to know and so i'm like <laughs> Tell me, tell me afterwards, dear. And so I'm in my, I'm, I'm like, I'm working, so I can't be matchmaker. But I'm like, okay, in our one on one, I want to talk to that brother and say, and what they say, what they say, what, what, what they say, the one on You didn't bring it up. What they said, I, I don't want to be awkward or I don't know how to approach them. And that's where I was like, listen, I'm not out here. I've been, we've been together for 20 years. So I've never dated. Um, so I wouldn't know where to start. Are right? guys so I'm not just saying I'm the expert, then? but I do know if I am interested in someone to walk up to them and say, like, that's how she got me. She she let it be known oh, that she wanted me. We were in high school, but it's yeah. still, she was, she was like, I like you. She told one of our, oh, our mutual friends. Oh, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Period. Wait, Derry, so you didn't even, you didn't even it's, ball up then. It's huh? a, you knew she was a it's yes. A so, either way. Right. I was in a different mental space. Right, we were. Like, we were 16. Wait, so I have a question then. Are guys just nervous? Yes. A lot of times. So, I've heard of Love nervous, that for them. So, rejection. nervous, Scared nervous rejection. about rejection. That's yes. a big one. And it's like, just... If she's rejecting you, it's okay. There's there's the other ones. Um, but there is the fear of Always rejection. Another. And then there's the fear of like in the church settings. Um, yeah, so how do I approach this person? Or then there's even another element um, in 
Y'all can chime in from the back. It's okay. Chime it's in, just gonna y'all. Be, it's gonna be open Let me today. check the mic. Too. Um, and then there's so there's rejection. There is how do I say this? And I don't want to be known as the guy in the church that's like hidden on thirsty, hidden on the uh, ladies, the, thirsty the player, dude. right? And so, mm-hmm. how can men over overcome those things? I'll let you guys. And my brother, just to piggyback off what you were saying, my brother made the comment to me was like. You hang around like you always are with your friends. How is a man supposed to approach you if you're around like three or four girl of your girlfriends? Where's your hunter spirit, brother? Okay. And, I was, <laughs> and that's how. And that's what I feel. So I'm like, he be a gladiator. Say like, oh, I like you, but like, but, pull me to the side. Okay, I, I was but gonna say that. Hey, walk up to him. Hey, how you like doing? That, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Not every not every man's personality is gonna be type A where they're gonna yeah, have right. that right. Some men are a little bit more reserved, and that's okay. And especially, sometimes it's hard. I mean, I personally think it works well when you have a type A and a type B. I'm very type A, out extroverted, you know, and, mm-hmm. and Ray is more reserved, you know? Did you pull him And, him? well, I mean, we were online dating, so it's like... It was a mutual pool. It was, it was a, you know, yeah. It was <laughs> <It's different>. <laughs> I guess that's the benefit of online. Yes. We ain't yeah, gotta, yeah, you know... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, if we were in the real world outside of online dating, I don't know. Would he have necessarily approached me? He probably might have been a little bit timid, maybe. Yeah, Ray, Ray you know? looks like he would have been so sweet to you. And you would have just had to catch on, sis, that the, that the love's there. He would be like, yeah. you know, probably, oh, I, I, I'm praying for you, sis. You yeah. know? Yeah. Or he probably you know would have found out what coffee you like and be no, like, like. Don't call me, sis. Yeah, who, who sent me this and raised in the back? <laughs> <laughs> We, we both have had this conversation. It's not, not like I'm like throwing him under the bus or anything like that, but like we both have had this conversation about how neither of us are what we thought, what we wanted. Like I wasn't looking for someone like Ray. Ray was not looking for somebody like me. Mm. And so we're not each other's expected or ideal version, but it's exactly what we needed and actually what we all, what we prayed for. Right. Mm. So that going back to the, the question itself. Yes. I do think there are a lot of guys who are just timid, just part of their personality. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think that's when we need to have each other help each other. Right. Like if that's the case, if you are that person, right. there needs then to be reach more out to somebody else that can help you to like kind of oh, find more out if they're men. interested. Uh, so my, I got a question for you guys. Is is it okay for a guy to approach you in public? Like say you guys are out somewhere, right? Ariel, I know you be going out. Why if you, you out at a bowling alley. <laughs> Not out in a bowling alley. You at a bowling alley or something and a guy notices you, is it okay for him to walk up and approach you? Why wouldn't, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when else is he gonna do it, in private? Well, no, know, come is, to my house. Are you, are you guys? <laughs> well, so, sent me. Right, so, the right. question is: Is are you guys only open to guys that like in a church setting? Does it oh. have to be a work setting? Or if you're just out hanging out with your friends, your girls, y'all out kicking it, and then a guy notices you, is it okay space. for him care. to walk up to you and, and talk to you? Because some women are like, no, like. Like, dude, oh. I don't know. You get away from me. You know I what don't saying? care. Huh. Is I it, genuinely don't Is it okay? Care. It's definitely okay for a man to approach me because I'm more so like, uh, I want to be hunted. Ah. So, hunted now. is crazy. We gonna, we gonna say pursued. It's not, it's not pursued anymore. <laughs> I said hunter and it threw her and it, it stuck did, with her. It did. The hunt is crazy. <laughs> be, be aggressive. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but like, okay, so I, I, said, qu- I got a follow-up so att- question based on what you just said. I'm more so attracted to a man that's like forward, but not like forward in a sense of like creepy, but just creepy, positively assertive. Assertive. That's the word. That's the good. Not intentional. 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 But it's also when you're approached too, because I had a man approach me the other day in a grocery store. But all while he was talking to me, he was undressing me with his eyes. So I was like, no, nope, you can't have down. that. Mm-hmm. Don't look down she here. Said, it's going to be a no. my So okay. it's all your People be crazy. Okay. Boys be crazy. Yeah. You know what, though? I kind of want to go back to Marianne's. Everything is so nuanced that I think wingmen are really what's needed. Because there's just so much going on in each of our brains. We're yeah. like, oh, do they just see us as, as a friend? Oh, are they actually flirting with me? Oh, what is going on? Having wingmen that's appropriate, that's not like all drama filled, I think is something that the the church does need. 
unfortunately. We won't get into that. Anybody in this point. Now. <laughs> right, right. Don't be spreading spreading stuff Jeez. around. This isn't a great example because, again, we were teenagers. And Goss- oh. Yes. I don't like my business out here. So our situation, we utilize, I utilized the wingman. We had a mutual male friend. And after, like, several weeks of throwing, you know, little coquettish, subtle hits, he wasn't getting it. Okay? And so... I, I snatched this boy up. Zach, sorry to this day, but I, I, I did one of these. I was like, I was like, tell Derry I like him. <laughs> you know, like, come on, all right, let's do this. Right. And let's so, this. and so I'm ready to be pursued. I'm not gonna pursue you, but I'm letting you know that you have the, the, the green the flag. To the, let's pursue. go. So you weren't afraid of rejection? Period. 16 year old Kawaka was <laughs> very like, that's what I love And about he had her. already showed that he liked me, but he was in his like teenage boy mind, just, oh, just okay. running around all carefree and I was like, it's time to, right. all right? right. Um, and so he, Zach went back and told him and he was like, oh, okay. And we were officially boyfriend and girlfriend like a week later. Um, but yeah, come on, my brother. But also, so when people, are, when we were talking about things like, well, we, people are, you know, they're timid and this and that. So, in my opinion, I'm like, thank God for the word of God that never gets old, that never expires. Let's go to the word. A man who finds a wife. Finds a good thing. Okay, finds a good thing. Okay, brother, I understand you a little shy. How you gonna do about this fandom? Let's get let's get this fandom going on. Okay? Let's go out here and be intentional. All right? Yeah. Get, you know what I'm saying? I think, like, I, I, think I do think some I think you gotta go back to, to the word. I think some men do need to be like coached up. But yeah, I don't just, know. And help them. Yeah. Come on now. No, but I think there's also ideals and there's idols. And I think some men want the perfect woman in their heads Absolutely. and their eyes. And they're not. I think women are so easy and so willing. Willing. So not easy. To compromise. Accommodate our expectations. We're like, oh, okay. You know what? I love him. But like, there's some stuff. But that's, let's talk we about. We were just okay. having this conversation yesterday. Right. You were talking about how men have to be so attract. You know, the, the attraction has to be there. And I was telling him, I'm like, how women, how like, we'll be like, he's ugly at first, but a whole personality. Right. Well, right. when right. over. Right. Personality. Like, oh, so fellas, I, that's if you ugly, me. there's hope. No. <laughs> he may be shorter than me, so, but I'll go for him. So Let upsetting. me tell you. Like, that has happened to me. Like, even back in the middle school days, I was like, I didn't, like, he's, you know, he's funny looking. And then he's funny. And I was like, God darn it. I got a whole crush going on now. And I didn't right. feel like, you know, well, I mean, right. we, we, to be honest, we all kind of do that. We'll see, I'll, like, I see a guy, right, with a, a, a woman. And then I'm like, Wow. What a messy, yeah. messy. <laughs> but I'm, I'm like, like you I'm know. Like, I'm like, but I'm like, yo, he. But then you like get to know the dude, and you like, oh, I, okay, I can see. <laughs> I can see like, dude is he's very he's assertive. Like he's a you know he knows what he wants. He's confident, and I could be like, oh, he don't okay. stink. You know. I mean, as long as you don't so, stink, we can work. With oh, things. so <laughs> yeah, you can you can you can you can see that. I think guys. But, ooh. You might as well. Come on. Come on up there, right? It's Ray. So. This is Marianne's <laughs> boo. <laughs> so, let me back up. There we go. If you gonna, unless you're going to stay, you just pop a seat right here. <laughs> yeah, put so, the arm on the chair. There you go. Right, okay. So, <laughs> right. the question is, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. But that's wife. So, it's not date. It's not, you know, anything else. So, a lot of women will look at that and say, like, I can never pursue a man because it's like he has to find me. But I'm like... I can take that up until proposing, but I don't see any reason why you can't go ask a guy out or walk oh. up and just like, you know. Or, you or can still right. find something when something is in front, like comes to your brain. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. oh, I found this, but it, it came, line, you know. <laughs> I think it's honestly to each their own because just because a woman goes up to a man goes, I like you, doesn't mean it's going to work out because like that's happened to me in the past. Like I've been like, I like you. And it didn't work. And so I, I think, think it's, it's harder to own. do that today than probably 20 years ago because we're in this multi-option era. And so yeah. like 20 years ago, I could have seen a woman doing that. I think why a lot of women today are apprehensive about that is because mm-hmm. even more now than ever, men are like, I have so many options. I don't have to settle down. So you and that's want why they're dragging their feet. Yeah, you want a man to pursue you, so I know you're serious. I don't want to be wasting my time. So I wanna... See, I think it's the opposite. I feel like there's a lot more women now 
who are willing to pursue. Back yeah. then, again, it's that concept of a man will pursue. So I think there's a lot more women now who are like. But is that worldly I'm woman, or is it does that apply to the to the Christian ladies? Like to the Christian ladies. Still? Okay. No, oh, yeah, I think the yeah. Christian ladies I know are a lot more. A little bit more bold. Now. We yeah. out here, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so that brings that brings in social media because social media you can kind of you set your profile up and then you can look for another profile with some things that you that you like, and so. How is that, how has that like hindered dating or made it better? Um, dating apps specifically or social media or both? Um, both, however you date. Some people just slide in DMs on Instagram or Facebook. Some people have dating apps, whatever. But using, using apps where you can kind of see this person, how they look, is, is that a thing? Um, is it beneficial get, can, or is it You can it, give kind of a, a menu, because, little fast. Love I know from of what of who you are like here. This what you getting? Yeah, like, I know like, from <laughs> not all men, but some men. The perspective is is like this is what I want, and she got to hit all these check marks, or I'm gonna swipe. What which, which is the way to swipe? Physical. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like because of that, dating now seems more so just superficial. Like, oh, I don't like that. Swipe left. Don't like that. Swipe left. Don't like that. And it's like, what about character? You know. The Coke bottle shape is not going to raise your children. Mm. It's not going to pay bills. Okay. Uh, oh, we need somebody with an organ in this model. Oh. that. For oh. real. That's good. The Instagram body is not going to have real conversations. Please tell the Instagram men. body ain't even real body. Just no, but the, I think yeah. the boys may not admit it, but I think it has influenced Absolutely. their, oh, absolutely. their oh, hunt, course. as you will. And I don't think it's influenced us as much right. as them. And I don't think some of them have even realized. I they think it's so setting themselves up yeah. for a world of hurt. Mm-hmm. Now you're in a house with a girl who's beautiful, whose personality you don't like, who's raising your baby, who has values that you don't, you know, share. Right. You're setting yourself up for a world of hurt. Right. And they don't, they didn't even realize it. And some men probably just tolerate it because they're like, she look good. Right. They have tolerating in the world, baby. And so I, I think that meeting people organically in community groups and in, you know, the places that you go to, whether it's work or the gym or, you know, at a coffee shop that you always go to, it's like a dying, it's a dying thing because I, people don't. I don't know if it's dying as much as we think. Really? Yeah. We don't know. So I think it depends know. on the season. Like, okay. I think for a while I was struggling and then like the past like year or so, like, there's been potentials out here. Like, I think it's I think it's a little bit more alive than we realize, mm-hmm. but it all depends on someone's perspective. And, but and are they biblical settings though? Is it is it more neutral spaces or yeah. worldly spaces, or do you think that there is an intentional like what is the culture of the church? How are they supporting you, and and helping in creating a, a a culture in the church that should the church be doing that? You know, where it's a healthy environment where biblical love can flourish. Yeah, I think that's like a whole another. Yeah, episode. that's a whole. No, no, no. Nah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually it's a question like, on here, but yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, never mind. Go ahead. So, I mean, I had a response to going backwards. Right with the with the, um dating profiles and stuff, I str- I struggle online dating because I like to meet people in person mm-hmm. and I like to get to know their personalities. Like a snippet or a caption of them, it's just not enough. And like physically, I'm like none of these guys could meet my expectation, which okay, is Katie. so funny. <laughs> which is so funny what you want, because. <laughs> No, but like when you, but then like I'll compromise if I meet you in person. Like it does, a, looks right, right, don't right. matter. Mm-hmm. Like I, it's it's interesting how you like get into different modes. So I always said I do not want to find somebody online dating. I had the same thing. I I want to meet someone in person. I want to see their character before I even you know whatever. Um, but you know, it was also COVID. It, mine was all accidental how Ray and I got together. But anyway, uh, I eventually decided, okay, well, no way. well yeah, according to the Lord, <laughs> well, of course, of course, of course, come on. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, but you know, eventually you get to the point where it's like, okay, why not? I think the part that stuck to me, my dad was like, you know, yes. And that was one of the questions too. Like, should you just be waiting around or do you actively like do something about it? Right. And mm-hmm. it's like, 
faith without works is useless, right? So it's like, you can have faith. God will provide. But you also just can't sit in your couch and just say, I'm going to wait. Rain from the and break wait, in. Wait, the wait, wait. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to do something. And so my dad was like, why don't you just go put a profile online and just see? And it took me years you know to finally. You know what it got to take for daddy to, 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 to second grandchild. <laughs> okay. Well, this is Indian culture. I should have been married, had kids, had three kids by the time I was like 23, right? Um, and so in their eyes, I was really old. But... Um, yeah, so I do think that there has to be a space for it. Again, if you really are desiring it, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you're in a space where it's like, I'm open, but I'm not necessarily like, I really want to get married right now, then sure, you know. But I was in a place where I'm like, I really want to get married now. I'm like, I'm ready to find somebody, but... And so do you think that God can... Now, my answer is yes. Um, but I'm interested to see what you... So do you think God can be in the midst of... Obviously, he can utilize anything, but in like... in um dating apps like in that yes. in that you know what i'm saying because mm-hmm. of course my answer is yes i think you guys are a huge testament to that um and so with but should we be leaning toward one more than the other i mean again it's just more resources at your fingertips for us i was actually in this space where someone else i was we I was with other christian fellowships and we were talking about how um I was always this person where I was always looking left and right, where I was like, any 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 room I was in, like, does this person have a ring on their finger? Is this, is this? Like, okay, I was Marianne. always looking, always, to the point where it was a little bit like, that was my personality. And I got to the point where this person was sharing their testimony, and they were like, you know what, I just decided to stop. Stop searching in that aspect and just say every single woman I meet, I'm just going to love them with the love of Christ. And if God tells me to pursue them, then I'll pursue them. Right. And I was like, well, maybe I need to do that. I need to stop searching and looking at every single man as a potential and just say, you know what? They're my brother in Christ and that's it. And then if something happens, something good. happens. So I was in this boat where I was like, you know, I'm dating, deleting all my dating apps. Cause mm. I'm just, I'm not, I'm going to stop like super, super actively searching. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was deleting everything and Bumble was the very last one that I was deleting and I was in the process of deleting it. So I was like swiping up to like close out the app when I accidentally swiped right on Ray. That does that not okay. give you chill? So Come that's on. what I'm saying is like God <laughs> clearly. <laughs> God is so good. He was like, he I got said he doubted it was actually. You say you seen that you seen that face shot. It was he like looked at her picture. He was like, that's kind of been. She don't. She won't me. No. So, <laughs> Ray's story is he's like I put my profile on Christian woman swipe 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 right. To that point, when I went online and went on Bumble, I put it on Christian, I put it on female, uh, and I did start swiping, but I said Holy Spirit, just you know, you pick one out. Grab my hand. And then yeah. that's how. You, For you, real? And, and wait, Bumble is different because the women have to reach out to yeah. the men. Oh, really? Oh, wow. They changed it. For real? Wow. Well, back okay. in the day, Bumble was different because you had to reach out to me. Yeah. I couldn't facilitate the conversation. Yeah, so when I yeah. accidentally swiped, it was like, ding, you're a match. So Ray had already. So then I was like, okay, now let me look at this profile. But then I felt guilty because I was like, I feel like I was supposed to be deleting the app. So am I disobeying God wow. in oh my like you know, even Damn. looking, because then I reached out to him, and I felt so bad, and then someone was like, or oh, it's the ram in the bush, you know, yeah. like, okay, like, ram in the bush? Okay. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, okay, maybe it was, and obviously, clearly, I mean, here we are, married now, have a kid, you know. I'm not going to crack, so, that's why I wear eyelashes. Yes, okay. God definitely right. works in the midst of dating apps, because again, our entire lives, I mean, if you're, if you're of a believer, your entire life you're submitting into God, right? And so it's every move you make, every path, every little turn, you want to be aligned to God and his will. So, of course, he's going to be in the midst of even the new technology and the things that are happening. It's not like he's going to not be a part of all those mm. things, right? It's a testament to your surrender, too. Like, yes. okay, I'm going to surrender every area of and my as life. And as soon as she yeah. just took that step. And as soon as you made you that, was just kind of like, okay, that's all I needed was a complete surrender. Like, you can have my date in life. Yeah. You can have my desire for marriage. And I I think 
what well, how beautiful would that be if we all got to that space of like okay i don't have to hold on because i think i'm in this tug of war with god like and i'm and i have to orchestrate everything I, yeah i i like got to this point where i like i was crying bawling because i have to say the words out loud like even if i am 50 60 70 years old and i am never married wow. i will still choose you and i will still serve you wow and i knew Jesus. i had to get to that point but I didn't want to. Mm. But when I finally did, it feels too real when you, if you, like, yeah, mm. when wow. I finally did, things started to change. I mean, when I finally did, that was, that was October of like 2019 or like no, the beginning, and so the like, end of the year. So I said in 2020, I want to find my person, and we met December 13th, 2020. Wow. <laughs> and by, at that point, I didn't know COVID hadn't happened, right? It hadn't hit yet. Yeah. So it was like the beginning of the year, and I was like, by the end of this year, I want to meet my person. And God, her, said, heard, her December, wow. right? The very wow. end, because it was October. And I was like, okay, this is not happening. Obviously, God is not a genie, and we don't always get those those fast 100%. those fast moves. 100%. But when we do. It, I feel like it's really like a wink from God, like, oh, you know, everyone's like, okay, yeah. Once, just, you know, give you a little faith, a little testimony to help, you know, go share and strengthen somebody else. So mm-hmm. I know it's going to help so many people. Mm. So I got a deep question for you guys. Um, with, even with talking about dating, using dating apps, what role should community and accountability play in Christian dating? Mm-hmm. So before y'all answer that, I want to, I want to set up a scene for you. So. Do you guys remember courtship back in the day? Mm-hmm. And where you had to have a chaperone? Mm-hmm. So do you feel like that should still, like, should your community still be? Oh, Katie's, Katie's saying no. Um, okay. All right. So, so, so how are you held accountable? What does that look like in today's Christian world? Like, should Christians be having sex? Are y'all? Are y'all? I guess accountability was, yeah. But it felt like courtship. It's giving like I want to control your relationship. No. Wait, you said courtship with the with chaperones, chaperones and stuff. I'm like, why are you here? Oh, quite to the extent of chaperones. I have to watch you, Katie. But the Bible does in the council many various ways. And so, so, it, it, but, but does that mean chaperones? So now, no. Nowadays, it means dating in public. Yeah, in community. And or not, going no, out no by and maybe in, in group. Going out in group settings, mm-hmm. um, or even having a person like I'm going out on this date, just, you know, just accountability. Okay. Like, okay, I'll, I'll be home that's at this time. Different. That's way different. I don't different. text you. That means okay. okay. You know well, I, I shared my location with my girls. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, but that don't mean they knew what you was gonna be no, doing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, how, yeah, did you right. it, how did y'all keep it PG? But so first, what role, and then we'll get into how y'all I'm kept sorry. it PG. So what role should, since Katie, you got a very strong opinion on this i'm gonna start with you what role should community and the, the church old time play? way you guys then you started when i said no you guys start acting like oh no it's just accountability accountability and chaperoning okay. very different things very in good. my head okay accountability bet chaperoning so what is not really like? I probably, I probably how can i support you my sister when you start with somebody asking talking. honest questions and being up front and calling me out. Okay. okay. But you got to be ballsy. Because, like, I'm not always going to be open, obviously. How are you going to make sure you... you tell the truth? All right. That's the question. How do I... We have to make sure we Because I know I would have God. You're not telling the truth, then how... God's going to convict me, let me tell you. Accountability that's, has to be both. That's a good answer because not everything done in the dark. And so if Katie say, oh, we keeping it PG, it's very cute. And then a couple months later, she's heartbroken because she didn't, you know, gave him a cookie. Oh, she and, and, and yeah, and he didn't walk, and he didn't walk off. And we like, okay, what, what happened to the PG story that Baby you told out. me? You know, so that's true. You know, and, and we do that at our church. We're like, we're not going to beat you over the head. We're not going to chase you around. It's going to come to light. And then you're going to come crawling back here crying. And we're going to pray for you and grace. Because you can't, stuff. you can't, sometimes you can't control people's behaviors either. Oh. You got to let them fall. So yeah, if you got to watch me fall, then I let me about fall. I'm controlling people's behaviors. Oh, but, it's, but it's I think some guarding. people low key be, be like be that. In the church. It can't oh, be. Yeah. yeah. Some people oh, sure. can, but I think yeah. it's. We in make your, sure you have that authentic in your relationship. In your small group, in your like one on ones, in your like, what? It's your group of three. Having those honest conversations, I would love to have. 
But that's who you should be having. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You shouldn't be telling. Exactly. You shouldn't be telling everybody. Every leader, exactly. every leader in the church ain't got no business telling you certain stuff. Right, for have sure. Y'all relationship just because they have that position. Right. So that trusted community of people who you know are gonna keep it real with you. Right. But so. you don't always find that. Even in community group, you don't always find that. They're supposed to be your tightest group of people sometimes because you see each other every week. You give that time away to them and not all of them you fully trust. And you shouldn't. And that, yeah, exactly. Discernment and next to who to share with. <laughs> Ariel, I want to hear what, what community. Right, Ariel's. Yeah, say your thing. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you got some. I know there. you got a good perspective. I want to hear this. Oh, no. I was just going to say, I think chaperoning is more so. I, I want to control you, but accountability accountability looks different. Like as my sister, and like and like what we're saying, like it's not for the masses, but like your small group, your closest core friends should like if you're going out dating. This works for my friend group. Like, hey, I'm going on a date at this time, this time. Like, text me at ten, text me at at eleven. Am I on my way home? Or like like sharing mm-hmm. location. So I think yeah, that's proactive, proactive versus oh we still and you uh, you believe, think you, and I don't believe, <laughs> me personally I don't believe in the whole we fail you fail that's what you, you did you were, y'all you were fell all right into yourself bed. into it hours before you we fail are. especially so, if you're a believer yeah. you felt those pricks of like we probably shouldn't Should be doing be this. this. Yeah. But what was the process I, I before? Can, was you doing a little too much grooming? Right what you doing all that matching your underwear and your bra for? What's that? What's that about, sis? See, we're gonna be seeing that, right. my sister. See. Put on uh-huh. them holy underwear and well. keep yourself holy. Well, okay. <laughs> what the old people used to say is tight, but it's right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. I think the the chaperoning again. I think it depends on who is chaperoning, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's why I think group dating is great. And being in public is probably one of the best. And it really is. Like, as much as we don't want to. I mean, unfortunately, Ray and I didn't have that privilege because it was COVID Mm -hmm. and the world was shut down. So, I mean, things were slowly opening back up, but it was also December. So it was cold by the time, like, we were actually actively dating. Um, And so we did have to, like, sometimes be in a house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely not easy. (laughs) Um, But so that's when we were like, okay, we need to probably invite somebody over to That's come good. at the house you know they got mask up whatever but we were like okay we need to start like bringing people over to the house when you're here good. and so we started doing that a little bit more and then i actually ended up having someone live at the house with me um for that season and so that was a huge benefit of like all right we'll just be at my house because she's already lives there and she's there so somebody's there mm-hmm. um yeah. but yeah i do think and heart heart posture let's like first and foremost heart posture because as teenagers who were very worldly when we got together it didn't matter who was in the house okay um yeah so you know it didn't matter what how public we gonna fat and if your house, house, is, house, you if your house find, is big you, you better be find like find a way no the you kids will. be going crazy you know, even so, in the car they're oh, in the back seat not yes. in the front i'm like what okay oh sh- listen so so we gotta talk well, i'm very my bad. <laughs> go ahead i'm very old-fashioned so i'm old-fashioned now as someone who was exposed to too much and who did too much too early, my mindset is so like old. Fa- like I would, if I could go back and do everything again, I would do a chaperone. I'd be like, I curtsy, you know, he'd kiss my hand. Like it would be very Amish. It would be very old okay, fashioned Amish. because I did it all and then and, and it didn't deliver in the way that you think, of course, that it is, you know, when you're, when you're in your flesh. Um, and, you know, I hear about other people's really cute stories and the first time, you know, with your husband on your honeymoon on an island. Okay, not in the back seat. That's beautiful. I, you know, and so I'm like, you know, obviously things worth waiting for, you know, are, are worth that trouble. But so I'm very just old fashioned. And I, and I don't want to be hypocritical because I have teenage daughters now and I don't want to be like, oh, do this, this and that. And they're like, but I was at your wedding. That's not the point. Okay. Um, you mind your business about that. Um, see, honey, see, Maya and see, honey are very big on that. They're like, we were at your wedding. Where the, the pictures right there? And right. I said, I know, but you were also crying and ruining my wedding, and I that's why I don't that. want that for you. Yeah. Maya's like, pick me up. I was like, I'm gonna just say I do real quick, if right. you don't mind, right. and then I'll pick you up. Um, so I'm just very like, I'm just complete end of the spectrum with my with my beliefs. I'm just, I'm just right. separate us. You know, right. no holding hands. All that, all that stuff now. 
And I think there should be balance, though. Like, yes. yes, you have your days where it's just you two, but also you have those community. Because sometimes your head can be so up in the clouds. Oh, my man, my man, my man. I love him. I love him. And you're not picking up on those maybe pink flags. Maybe they're not all the way red right. flags. They're maroon. Flags. Exactly. But they, maybe they be yellow flags. And maybe your, your sister's like, hey, have you seen this? Mm-hmm. Have you seen, like, how he's, like... Anytime a man says something to you, like, he mm. on you. Or, like, yeah, I feel like, going back to the scripture, like, there's there's wisdom in, in, in a multitude of, of people. And this has to go back with this. What I have to say has to go back to a couple other questions, too. But I think a lot of the problem, whatever, or issues we come across is because people just don't have a solid foundation of what, is even marriage what is the purpose of marriage what like all of that like so much even with guys like you know the whole question of guys pursuing girls and like guys being you know timid and all this everything has to go or like we were saying like guys wanting this perfect right like perfect thing if we if the people understood the purpose of marriage and people actually understood the fact that like Every single marriage is so much work. Easier. You have to like it. It's supposed to mimic our relationship with Christ, right? It is this act of you need grace, you need love, like you need mercy. You need to realize that there's going to be compromises. There's going to be places where you're gonna look at yourself in the mirror, and that's what marriage is, right? The other person's gonna have to hold you accountable. And so, if we actually understood that baseline and people actually understood that then i feel like the output would look a lot different mm. yep hmm. that's good so i got a i got a deep question um about men what is you guys's definition mm-hmm. of a man a godly man or just a, a man oh, well, it was, oh. or is that's all i looked at this question i was like Ugh. <laughs> i was in the car and i was like that's <laughs> a lot <laughs> 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 Cause it's a lot. That's a lot to describe. Okay. But like, Thanks. but also it's not. Uh, uh, um, uh, a man okay. or a husband. Um, okay. uh, or a man so, you would consider for a husband. Yes. What is a man that you would pursue? I mean, uh, a man that you would allow to pursue you. What are some characteristics that he must have? Um, those are two different definitions. Right. right. A, man, a man, what a man is versus what my type of man is, is different. Right, what's, what's your type of man? You can't answer. Well, you can't answer. But we'll, we'll, yeah. can't. we'll start with my wife you and can, then we'll go around. Give you guys time it's to brag. It's almost not even. But it's almost not necessarily <laughs> even a man. It's more just like a follower of God. It's not even and necessarily that will be them being Absol- a man, absolutely. but like it's almost just like what's well, a good what's a yeah, good, what's a good what, what makes a man God. good enough for you to date him, right? Okay. Give me, okay. give me, give me, what, what do you think of give me top three husband quality. characteristics attributes that a man must have. I'm trying to summarize. Okay. Knowing what I know now, um, uh, uh, uh diligent follower of Christ um and that right there answers everything because mm-hmm. it's gonna make him a hard worker yep. it's gonna make him have a servant's heart yep. it's gonna make him gracious it's gonna make him gentle with his speech and he's gonna love his life and so that I mean that pretty much again knowing what I know now at 35 years old if you would ask me this question you know before when we were married at 23 I would have been like oh nice and hard working um so what's a what's a good so what's a good time frame that you should see some of these things to even continue on in a relationship with with i saw it with you in a matter at your young age um i saw it with you in a matter in summer school in a matter of like six to eight weeks Mm -hmm. i saw really i saw really i saw your maturity i saw your kindness um, your work ethic. He's he sold CDs in high school and he took he used the money to take me to, to the movies. Um and I saw, you know, in a matter of I saw how kind you were to your nieces to your niece and nephews. Um so for me it was like eight weeks. I think it goes to what you have to say. I always told my parents, I said, I want someone who truly genuinely loves the Lord. Because if they genuinely have a real relationship with God, 
that means they listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And if they listen to the Holy Spirit, guess what? I talk to God. So God will let my future husband know what my needs are. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I met Ray and how it came about was it was legit like Ray would made a he I wanted some I wanted like a Reese's whatever I was I was craving it was it's silly right stupid no it's and I didn't say anything we were in the car you know and he went walked walked into Walgreens and he came out with a Reese's and I said how'd you know I wanted one he goes the Holy Spirit is a great wingman and I was wait a minute better cut it out (laughs) because that's exactly what I said like if if it really is truly a someone who's sensitive to the Holy Spirit. God will let them know. Okay, like I remember that time she every time she went to the store she usually get a Reese's mm-hmm. and I just is was that was that it? And it just wasn't attention. Yeah, you but and it's not even that. There are times where it's like nothing is said. I won't say anything. We call but it marriage telepathy. Knows. Yeah, I say it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it is. It's Holy Spirit. It, you know it's Holy I mean? Spirit. <laughs> and it, I really do. And 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 I could see it too. I think one of the other things was like. Um, there was a moment where we were in argument, disagreement, and he just stopped and just started quoting scriptures to like ground himself again. And that was a very specific prayer I asked God. Like it was one of those things where I like wrote it. So I didn't tell anybody. It was one of those things where I was like, God, I want someone who not just reads scriptures and memorizes scripture, but actually applies it to their daily life. And I mean, come on, you're upset right now and you're quoting scriptures to ground yourself again. I mean, that right there was... And this woman in the world getting you know, cussed out. Yeah, and, and so I, that's why I say, like, if you have that genuine relationship with God, it, it all trickles trickles down character-wise. That's a... So... Okay. Yeah. God's mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, if y'all ain't got nothing to add, you don't have they to. Do. They do. Y'all look like y'all they got do. some stuff. Men of... You know, take this over here. Like with the man that, you know, so you can look back on this video. Ah! I look back. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. And be like, look, babe, I, look I talked that. about you. Uh-huh. In detail. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I definitely agree with both of you all. A man of God who is submitted. Um, that's, that's the word. But not even submitted to the Lord, first yeah. and foremost. Yeah. Submit, submitted to his leadership at church and like, does he serve? Like, what does his heart look like? Is he all about self? And my, what I have going on, and this is what I want to do. And never it's like community or communal or thinking about someone other than himself. Um, do you have vision? Do you have goals for your future? Because if you don't have vision for yourself, how you have vision for a family and then yeah. for, for us when we become one. So and good. so... That's something I'm looking for. I'm looking for a leader. Like, you want, you take that seriously. Like, that's not something, like, haphazardly. Like, so do you lead good in your finances? But we're going to be bankrupt or, like, living in a box or, yeah. I have more, but. No, it's good. I'll let Katie go. Um, I've been tossing up between two words, but I think I've formed it into one. Um, malleable. Mm. I do like that. In like everything, mm. all of it. Like I want flexible, willing. To I want to be malleable, but I want him to be malleable. Okay. Mm. To the Holy Spirit, to God, to me, to people in his life, to his mm. kids, like all the things. Mm. Humble, willing, and that Teacher. turns into Teacher. malleable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause like. I think it's just it's just so it's so important because that that just leads into growth that leads into listening that leads into being attentive that yeah it leads into everything if you're malleable that because life throws you lots of curveballs right um we could sit here and drag this out another couple hours and tell you guys about story after story and where I've watched him just adjust just right okay this is a new this is our new normal this right. is a new circumstance and i couldn't imagine if he had whatever was stubborn or you know whatever the case may be in some of these situations like his ability to adapt right um has carried our family and to take you to take it back to what you said about being a leader um you know and that's that's a little bit frowned upon a bit nowadays in the 50 50 culture and in the independent culture but i'll tell you just biologically most women who get married, you get married during your childbearing years. I cannot be a leader two days postpartum, bleeding out, weak, 
you know, just had a blood transfusion, whatever. I cannot, I cannot do that. I don't want that role. Mm -hmm. um, I will help. I will help like nobody's business. Yeah. But I so appreciate having someone who is steadfast. Mm -hmm. right. You know, almost to a point where he's had to put so much of his self on the back burner. We've had miscarriages, and I'm on the floor crying, and I'm a hot mess, and he has not even had a chance to grieve. Right. You know, and to, to be able to, I don't, you know, to carry a family in the way that he has. Right. And does, and so that's such a good point. And, it, and I know it scares so many women because lead me, that means you're doing, you're the boss and you're doing, and what if you do me? And I know it's scary, mm -hmm. but it's because they don't know what it is to be there. Mm -hmm. That right there is, oh, mm -hmm. indescribable, an indescribable yeah, feeling. Ah! <laughs> She said, you can't. "Not your hands was up." <laughs> oh my gosh! I surrender. There it is. I think that's we're willing to say that, but just wait. You'll be like, "Hold on." You said back. what? You I'm decide. Don't no, talk, no, talk to me like that. But if I meet him, I'm gonna ask him. I'm like, "She's a man." I'm gonna take that clip. <laughs> Send it to her. <laughs> Remember this? Remember this? <laughs> that has to go back to what submitting is, right? It's not just like, woman, go do this and right. do all these things for me. And, you know, I always say, I'm like, I have no problem cooking, cleaning for my man again. But, like, if it's... Wait, wait. If it is... <laughs> Yo, that's struggling. Ray said, you bet. <laughs> But as we've talked about again, when someone is following Christ, they're submitted to Christ, right? And if we as believers know that ultimately at the end of the day, God's will is the best for us mm -hmm. when a man is submitted to God, then there's going to be a place where whatever decision he's following under God is going to be what's best for you. But at the same time, again, personality comes into play because I am very type A. I make a lot of decisions around the house. Mm -hmm. But as a type A, and I think I had a great role model of my mom um, and seeing a lot of godly marriages where I understood some, what submission looks like to the point where it's like, I am type A, I am a go-getter. I am very much like loud and, you know, here I am and I want to do everything, right? Um, and I had to ask someone, I was like, what does that look like in a marriage? Because I don't want my husband to not be, I don't want to lead the house, yeah. even though I make a lot of decisions and things like Good that. Decisions. And she had mentioned, made a comment about like, you have to remember it's like the priest of the house. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, she's like, I make a lot of decisions in our house. Right. She was like, I, I'm the one who starts the conversations and do, does all those things. And, um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I bring it back to my husband and we talk about it and he can make the final say if we're not, if we're confused or whatever. Right. And usually Ray will say, well, it feels good with me. I'll pray about it. And if I feel right, then we'll move forward or whatever. And this was a comment that I had told Ray the other day. Um, I do think there's a part of me because I'm so like making decisions and all the time, sometimes my faith, like living it out, like my day to day part, like I'm definitely rooted in Christ. But, like, I don't always find the time to sit down and read the Bible or pray or something. Or even sometimes it'd be, like, easy for me to be, like, oh, you know what, baby's sick, let's not go to church or whatever, right? But even on Friday, we were all sick. RJ was sick. We were all sick with the flu and everything. And it was very easy for me to just be, like, all right, we're all just going to sleep or something. But Ray was, like, well, it's a good Friday. Like, let's watch a good Friday service. And so, like, he's constantly as the priest of the household, keeping us grounded in the word. And he always makes a comment, like, my job is to wash you over with the word, right? Mm -hmm. And so I see that, right? The priest of the household leading us in a spiritual way, keeping us as a family grounded in that aspect. I think there's a lot of that submitting under his authority as a priest. Um, mm -hmm. Because, again, practically, our personalities are different, right? And so I think sometimes women who are stronger, they're like, how do I actually allow a man to lead when I'm the one that does a lot of the decisions and I do a lot of the leading. Mm -hmm. um, what does that even look like and how is that even possible? Um, but also you have to know that if you are that type of woman, being humble enough to say, I need to make sure that my man leads, right? Because it's easy to just take over and not leave that space for the man to be the man. Mm -hmm. um, and only because I had great role models that I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't, I feel like I probably would suffocate him. <laughs> uh, that's good. Oh, uh, go ahead, Adam. Well, we got the.
producer coming out you as a question. So, well, not really a question, more of a comment. I think on top of all of that, uh, the um, role of a leader, too, is to delegate tasks. So exactly. he knows what you're good at. He knows what he's good at and what the Bible calls him to do. And then also like what you're able to do with whatever you know your physical abilities are. Uh, and also your mental abilities. So I think all of that also comes into play. All right. All right, producer. Come on. All right. Y'all all right. Jim, I'm okay. Notes. Well, okay. Um, no, so we got a couple more questions. I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Um, how far along should a man be in life in order for you to date him? Well, I can't Wait, answer no. that. Wait, no. What do you mean by that? Like how accomplished? Like yeah. where should like where should a where should he be? Or it, yeah, where should he be like financially? Um, should he have a business? Should he make a certain amount of money? Should he has a Should he have his own house? Should he have a car? Like where should a man be? I think in, uh, there, far, how far along in life should he be? Even you know, another way to an, ask that question is like a lot of people talk about: Am I trying to look? For, would you date someone with the potential, or have they already arrived? Quote unquote, right? Like, would you date someone for potential? It's nice for him to have a car. Like that's okay, like, like, get around. I don't care if it's a hoop thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's I really <laughs> don't like driving. I know you can this take man of everywhere. Driving a man everywhere is exhausting sometimes. So I think as long as he's got a car and he's malleable and there's potential, <laughs> bet he could be homeless, maybe. Maybe. Okay. So my wife probably would say the car because she don't like driving. So I don't know if I can answer this because I, so technically. Well, let them answer first, baby. Okay. Let I chose answer. a high school boy yeah. with no job. So I have a, I have, I have thought. But he took you to the movies, though. With, Somehow. Oh, come on now. Somehow. I, mean, I, Somehow. I, I definitely made it happen. If and I, have a, I have some feedback, but I'm going to let you guys share. I don't think it's necessarily a certain, like, destination or point he needs to be at in his life for me to, like, date you. But it's some certain it's certain characteristics and characters that I want to see. Like, are you driven? Do you have ambition? Can you take care of yourself right now? Like, do you have vision? If I'm seeing all of those things and like you're not just at home on the couch or your mama's house. Or your mama's house right. or your couch. Right, surfing, right. That or plays you don't part. really have a plan or you don't see vision for yourself, like those are the things that matter to me. Like, and even with that, like, is your vision submitted to the Lord? Like, mm. that's is it. he able to change and that? That's so, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, sometimes a man is still living at home, but it's a very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, intentional decision, right? It's Saving saying, money. Oh, yeah. And, you know, as long as it's not one of those things where it's like, I'm expecting my family to take care of me and I'm not doing anything with my right, life that's right. a different story right because mm-hmm. i think you can date for a potential as long as they're actively the fruits right like that's yeah. our you know they're popping out right mm-hmm. where it's like not just saying oh i'm gonna you know do i'm gonna have a business and da da but you're not doing anything to even get to, <laughs> to work towards that right, that's right. a whole different like that's, you don't need to be a millionaire but right. you know like as long as you're like get this million just stick by me you know you, you ain't like, got no plan are you uh, trying to further your knowledge in this thing are you trying to actually actively work towards that goal sure you know that that's that's a i think that part right there because again um i know specifically lots of men who are married now who have specifically said i am waiting until i have x amount of money in my account and i'm financially stable to take care of my family which is all good in there but at the end of the day you are never you don't, ready you don't know to be married like you just don't know you're never going to be in a position where I'm, okay now i'm i'm ready to get to get married i think that's kind of the downfall of sometimes of our society put in today. a monetary or materialistic um as as a couple who has been homeless together we were homeless a month after we got married um and so as someone who knows that they come and go so easily i think that um obviously my sisters don't go out here and just pick up homeless guys true you're right you're right but, <laughs> but there has to be other things you know in play and he's told me he's like other women would have left me like they would have left um we've lived in homeless shelters together um you know uh, the day we had our third daughter 
25 weeks was also the day that we got evicted. It was a really rough period in our time, in our life. It was the longest he ever went without a job and he was searching. My, my man was searching. I was in with a very difficult pregnancy. We were very behind in rent. Um, I had my daughter June 4th. They saw that we weren't there. They came and put, so the day we had her and we didn't know if she was going to live, all of our stuff was put out on the street. And he went to go get back and get clothes for us. We didn't have any clothes. All we had was a car. And we lived at the hospital for the next three months. And then after that, we lived at a homeless shelter for eight months um, with three children. Like our daughter left the, the, the NICU. She had to go live at a, at a homeless shelter. Um, and ironically, it was one of the happiest times of our marriage wow. because Jesus was in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, obviously have some parameters for your safety and wisdom set up. Like you said, have a job, you know, this and another. But look at the heart. Because while the circumstances can change and the job can change and the money can change, when the heart is the heart for Jesus, we were so in love. I tell, we talk about all the time how I'm like, that was some of the best times of our, of our marriage, of our children. We had taken growing kids God's way. God, God knew. Um, we had taken growing kids God's way. Uh, we had a three-year-old and a two-year-old and a newborn. And our three-year-old and um, one-year-old were so well behaved because we had taken growing kids God's way for a whole year. And so in the midst of all this chaos, we're not dealing with terrible twos or threes or whatever. Everybody else was we're, beating the mess out of their yeah, kids. Yeah, we're, so we're in the homeless shelter. Wow. We're in the homeless shelter and you eat together in the, I'm, and I'm going to try to be quick. We eat together in the in the eating area, the cafeteria. They serve you um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. And there's about 20 other families, 30 other families. Um, and, and my mentor, which you, when we were taking the class, she, she told us, she said, your children's obedience are going to call people to Christ. Wow. And so we're at the lunchroom, and we go together, me and him. We, um, Lily would be, our little baby would be in her little car seat. And our three and our one-year-old would be sitting at the table like this, waiting patiently for their food. Um, and all the other tables around are it's utter chaos. The, the families are in, in chaos. The kids are acting a fool. The mom's slapping them. Shut up and blah, blah. And in the midst of, their, our children are sitting quietly. And in the midst of, shut up and shut and stop it. And our children's obedience is drawing their eyes away from their chaotic setting. And so now people come and they say, well, how, is, how are you doing this? And we say, we took a, a class called Growing Kids God's Way. And now God has been planted in their minds. I said, I told my children, I said, you've been showing Christ since you were three and one years old. Mm -hmm. um, and so absolutely have those parameters and, and stay, stay in prayer because God will show you. He's like, I know this guy don't have like the, the top tier job that you said you kind of wanted, mm -hmm. but it's hardest for me. Mm -hmm. And so the circumstances can change, the bodies change, um, but it's, it's the heart that, that, that really carries your marriage through. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man. You could be at that high paying job and then all of a sudden, you know. Well, we see people do that all yeah. the time, yeah. you know, and yeah. the market crash and then now people is committing suicide. What you jumping out the window for? The woman is like, I'm divorcing you because she was only with him for the money yeah. and now the money is gone. And, or you God, know. the guy's identity is wrapped up in yeah. being this provider yeah. and da, da 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 when it's like, no, 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 your identity is in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, those other things are our benefits and those things, but like. Being a provider is so much more than just financial, yes. right? It's emotional. Emotional, yes. right? Spiritual. It's it's being present, right? Mentally being there. Um, so there's a lot more things than just being a, a provider financially when it comes to that. Um, My so, husband is so good at coming home every single day from work and like saying hi and being nice to all of us. And I'm not good at that. After and pull a baby little four or five hour shifts, and I'll be like, I walk in, I'll be like, Ugh. and my husband every day comes in and he's like, hi, how are? And he's like, and, and I'm like, I don't know how he does it. You know, but providing peace. Well, you got to be in. It's intentional. It's not just. Do you just feel? Do you always feel like it? <laughs> well, well, especially in our last living situation where we lived in this building that was crazy. Love Laramie. Um, oh my goodness! Shout yeah. out! Yeah. Shout yeah. out, Laramie! <laughs> so that was definitely where I didn't want to go home. And when I did go home, I would sit in the car and I would just have to pray, like because I'm like, I want to like. Just being transparent, I like I would shoot all these dudes on this porch. Like right. it's just you a, how you was gonna shoot them? Have a gun? You didn't go to punch, punch. first. You went punch. straight to you went yeah. straight to shooting. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> 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 with the way, right? Y'all, um, Adam is churchy. I he, love he is he is born in church churchy, <laughs> and he has this. And he's young. He's young, but he has this old churchiness about that you can't say. Uh, <laughs> you gotta meet his dad. I gotta ask, are you single? Okay, are you looking for somebody? Okay, all right, we got, we got to keep this in, keep this in. Yeah, 
promotion. <laughs> Do you feel like you have to be financially there? Uh, I feel like the standard is there, even though I'm not. I'm not there, but I feel like the standard is, which is a lot of pressure, I think. That's your personal mm. standard for yourself? Who's no, putting the pressure? Oh, society okay. standard. Okay. Society. Who's society? society. Everybody, as a collective. Do you feel like other men in the church put that pressure on you? Uh, yeah, I think it's the idea of being a provider, but mm-hmm. not directly expressing like it's more than just finances. Mm-hmm. Um, and living in or dealing with the the, sort of the prosperity message type of deal, mm-hmm. um, having to combat that. The rat like race. Really that. Yep. I yeah. Get some food and Starbucks. And He's a good man. He can take you out. <laughs> He's a good All man right. for man. <laughs> well, well. Um, and I don't endorse anybody because they're single and Christian. I just want to put that out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some of y'all need so, to stay over. Uh, it's definitely. I agree. And that does lead me to my final question: Is does the church properly set us up to be married? It did for us. It did for us. We went to a church that was not perfect by any means. But um, they put us under amazing men's worship, and they had, I mean, classes galore, biblically a lot of classes. sound classes, and we just got addicted to them. I and mean, we took so many classes. The love, one that saved our marriage. Love and respect love and by respect. Um, em- Emerson. Good. One. good. We're, we're about to redo it, um, just because you know maintenance. Hey, you ain't gotta waste things are bad. But um, we were mentored under an amazing couple, Phil and Phil and Tasha Collins. Um, we so so God is so good that we um. We were celibate before we got married, even though we had two kids. Mm-hmm. So the Holy Spirit came in and convicted and was like, y'all shouldn't be doing that. Y'all ain't Been married. That's nasty. And so and, <laughs> <That's nasty>. um, <laughs> and so for almost a whole year before we got married, even, so we had one slip up and that created Lily. So I'm, I'm, if you look at my wedding pictures, I am pregnant at my wedding. And that was a slip, but we didn't do it again after that. And this how, let me tell y'all how good God is. Let's talk about honoring your Jerry's obedience. like, what? It's, it's really Listen. hard because Wait. I, it's, it's, you live with somebody. Say it again. Say it again. Listen, you've been doing something for so long, right. and then you just be like, I'm going to stop. But it's like, it's right there. And then the person who not it. And, um, comes it. out of the shower, and, and then you're like, girl, girl, can you just go straight to the room? And your girl was 23. Okay, things are in place still. Not <laughs> okay. it. It's All right. right there, I'm like, I'm gonna just leave the house. Let me know. Say she, thank you. Right, right. But so yeah. Right. But when we got married, this is how good God is. He honors your, he honors your effort. And so we, we, it was almost like so six months free of of premarital sex. And so we get married. God is so good, y'all. While we was nervous on our wedding night, <laughs> why it was cute? <laughs> it was a little. It was so like. I don't want to go. I don't want to go too. I don't want to go too far. I feel, when the cameras go off, I'm gonna share a little bit more with you. Later. But it was adorable. It was so sweet. I'm literally pregnant, and it was just very sweet and tender. And I was like, I'm gonna tell y'all something that's really going. I can't sit on camera. Okay. Oh my goodness. All right. So. Um, what was the question? How is the church? Um, yeah, right. How was how is the church? What? Is the church properly preparing, preparing for singles for marriage? And even married folks, is it you know supporting a successful continued marriage? Yeah. What do you guys think? I would say my my current church community definitely is because first you have to ask your, ask yourself: Are you under sound theology, sound doctrine, like? Can you go back to scripture and say like, okay, my pastor preached on whatever on this text. Can I find this in the word of God? And I can say, honestly, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also like, are you being discipled? I feel like 
um actively that's one piece i feel like i would like i feel like that is missing yeah in my life to have just like an older woman to do life with me but that's a um, whole nother topic yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like in my life with you said <laughs> say it again <laughs> yeah someone to just walk life with me and just like yeah, because I feel like I'm discipling other younger ladies. Amen. But I would like to have that also. Like, Take yes. me to Chipotle. <laughs> oh! Yes! <laughs> baby! Chipotle, <laughs> Drive me around. Okay. Let, me sit, oh. let me sit in the back and be an Uber. Yes. Let me. Yes. Mm. Okay. That's a real thing, though. There's not, like, I feel like our generation is craving it. This type of shit. Where are these old it, people at? They're not, <laughs> where are you at? <laughs> They don't like the word. Oh, no, no, but they you know what? They, they're they not going to watch this, Katie. Anybody yeah. like 45 and up, they're not watching. If you're watching, bro, girl. Girl, if you're watching, hit me <laughs> up. I'm just Take kidding. me to Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Take yeah, me to Chipotle. Uh, hey. local church. Find me a local oh, Lord. Yeah. yeah, people aren't doing it. That generation, like, there's a gap. The generation before what? that, they did it. But that generation oh. right before, I don't know where they, they are. Do it. Everyone no, but they got caught, everybody knows everybody They got caught up in their kids. They got caught up in their kids, though. Yeah. I think that was the thing. It probably is part of it. Like you, like how can I? I'm trying to get this household in check. I can't even help anybody else. But I'm talking but about the women who not with little kids. Like, I'm talking about the, the, the before that, right? Oh, like the grandmas. I'm about the ones who like have kids out of like they're out of empty out of nesters. Empty nesters. Yeah. They're just empty nesting. What the My heck? My mentor is in her 60s, and she's tr- currently um, her and husband are retired. They are in a top-notch RV, they live traveling. In best traveling. Life. They live in their best life. The wor- they they follow the the sun and the heat, um, and she calls me every Monday faithfully, and she holds me accountable. And Love I'm that. just so grateful for her. But you we'll got take, you we'll got a fandom. A- you got to latch on. Like look here, Missy. Because sometimes wow. it, it, you're you got to see what kind of personality. My wife is very strong, and so mm-hmm. you got to find somebody that's gonna be like. I ain't trying to know you talking about. Listen, girl. Right. And, and, and really, Amen. You know, tell strong, you how it I'm is. So. I'm strong in some of the Right. Ones, I'm strong in stuff. All strong women don't actually want to be strong. Yeah. Yeah. My wife be trying. I'll be like, girl, sit down. Bars. <laughs> okay. Bars. Y'all hear me? Bars. <laughs> Um, I think that I'm like I do want to say we become <laughs> strong because out of necessity. Yes, we don't want to be strong, y'all. I want to be. I want to be a yeah. stay at home wife. I'm a damsel in distress. Let, <laughs> let me say. Let me say. Uh, answer to your question though. I think the church is really good at teaching theology and like teaching principles of who we are to be as followers of Christ, and I think that applies to marriage. But I think we need more couples more mentors to be more candid about what marriage actually is like i love when marianne's like this is how it really is you know what i'm saying (laughs) i love that and i think we need more people like that like i'm even thinking about even back in wisconsin like oh my gosh there's so much faking going on so many secrets so many you won't know that until or we're not going to talk about that or let's not do that. And you're like, no, like let's actually. And I loved when my mentor was like, this is how it really is in the bedroom. And you're like, what? So like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Just being candid, being candid. Yeah, we it helps yeah. because I had a lot of women. I, would, I directly would ask questions and I had a lot of women in my life who were married who would just open it up. Like my girls, like we would have very very like non PG conversations. Right. You know, I'm having that with my not with my, like with my friend group, but I want some like an older one. Yeah. yeah. Even, like married. Give women me PG thirteen. Yes. Give it to me. Yeah. I feel like I cut you off when you were saying earlier when you were talking answering this question. Oh, about the church? Mm-hmm. Oh no. Um I was saying yeah. And so I agree with, with Katie and just like theology and like you know, preaching the word, I feel like it's there. Um, and I feel like it, even we have a ministry called 20s and 30s. And I feel like I'm also outside of church I'm in spaces where there are a lot of single Christian men. But I don't know. It just seems to be a disconnect. Like, it it's just hmm. not. It's exactly how I described it, happening. which is why it's we're having this podcast. a lot of single men at my church. It's not happening. I can't wait to watch their episode. Did they answer the same questions or some, similar some ones? Some of them. Some of them. Bible says wait. enjoy the wife of your youth. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I do. <laughs> one more question. I'm sorry. One more question. Um, how long 
what is the, the, the process and how long should it take, right? So you have the talking phase. <laughs> Shouldn't even exist. We love and the talking phase. You got the talking phase. How long? Y'all like it too much in this generation. How long should the talking phase be? Yeah. And then there's the Shouldn't be dating long. phase, right? Where we're exclusively dating, okay. right? Exclusively and then there is, and how long should that happen before there is an engagement or marriage? Whoa, wait. Exclusive dating means boyfriend, girlfriend. Yes. It I mean, doesn't mean just going in, on In dates. the words of Chicago, and we go together. Period. I think we I rock. Think it shouldn't even be a talking. We rocking. It should just be dating, exclusive dating. When we talk, engaged. the talk will be like, "You love Jesus, bet I love Jesus." Okay, that that was the talking phase. But that's phase. not reality. That's we need to work with like reality. Stage is kind of getting to know you. Like I'm kind of like filling you out, but getting to know me personality wise. Yeah, sure. but there's. I think that's just life. Like, do you? You know what I mean? No, but are you, so it's you talking not to somebody? Are you talking to multiple people? Not me, I'm not good at that. She said not over him. Sometimes. I'm not good at most Right, times. I call you the wrong name. Hello, okay, my bad. So if it's a guy, he walks up to you. But this y'all. is a guy's question, though, because a lot of times we're in the talking phase because guys keep it there. Yeah. And they really do be keeping it there. So do you cut them off? But we be you? letting them. But that's because oh, that we're, so like we be letting them because we want to control this situation. They be no, keeping I, I us a there. Lot of women want to seem flexible yeah. and this and, and that. We, and so I'm and very, we, I'm, right. I'm very, you know. Oh, so that we got married because of an ultimatum. Oh. And so we were pre- so we were pregnant with number two. I'm 21 years old, and it was not malicious. Um, and I just oh we were living together, and we were sitting on the couch, and I just told him matter of factly, just so you know. If you don't propose to me in six months, I'm leaving. No, not malicious. It was just a fact. And he was like, okay. And he he was like, (laughs) I'm like six months months pregnant with our second child. And he was like, oh, okay. And he proposed to me in three. Now, the downside of that was that he proposed to me with a Walmart Uh, ring. Get that Walmart. Where Walmart? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't nothing wrong with the Walmart. It was real, though. It wasn't here to Walmart. Did you get a discount? Did he rob give you the little discount? Because I work there. On the couch. <laughs> Look, I I have people, and yeah, that happened to a lot of people, and I think sometimes guys just get so nervous, and then it's just I like, was trying I'm to do, do the spot. I had seen it in a movie or a show or something. I, I was trying a, to be spontaneous. I had a bonnet on, and in I was my trying pajamas. to like, I'm gonna catch you off guard. She, because if I take, she nosy. So if I'm doing anything, and I'm like, I need to be it done, been, going out. It she's gonna be like, date, what are we doing? What are we doing? Could it have been date night? Could it have been date night? That's all right. You wanted to be public, so I don't necessarily want a man to propose to me in the middle of a restaurant. Yeah, I or on yeah. the side of the river, or on a boat. Like, nah, bro. Like, because <laughs> if I say no, you gonna push that's me. That's too the embarrassing. <laughs> on, on top of the sea salad. Oh no. So ultimatum. Ah! <laughs> oh, ultimatum. <laughs> that's a work. true ultimatum. <laughs> yes or die. Oh, <laughs> on a mountain. All right. So is. So you guys are saying that there's no no talking phase. Well, no, no I, I think we have to work with reality. I think there is a talking phase. Okay, and how long should that talking phase last? Relationship. Well, no, but that's okay. Period. I, I don't I think it. dating is really a thing, but I know there's online dating now, and so people are going on dates now more than I think they were a couple of years back. But I still think there's a there's a talking a thing phase. And that starts when you're in like high school and people just continue to do those types of behaviors in their 20s. Okay, so you as a 24 year old, what is the process? Start to finish, you like him, he likes you, you both love Jesus. Oh, um, mm. From day one to walking down the aisle. It's hard because sometimes talking phases, some people with talking phases, sometimes one side sees it as talking and then another sees it as just friendship. So should that be communicated in the beginning? Mm. Like it's, it's just okay. Sometimes you don't know. But see, that's why I don't think there should be a talking phase. Communication is hard. Because communication is be. hard, though, because fear of rejection, all of these things. So, so where, do, be, where do we go? Either way, either way it goes, though, someone is going to get left like with hurt feelings. And right. And someone, you join it out, I think you should be having that conversation. Right, you know, early like, on. Like, what is this? Right. Am I reading into the? Am I reading this yes. situation, reading into this too much? The right. like moment that one person is interested, just say it. Or just say something. Even if it's like, 
I, I think I'm interested in you. I would like to get to know you better. Like, it doesn't have to be you're exclusively dating, but it's just like, I want to get to know you better. And you can call the talking page or whatever, but I think there should at least be an intent set, set right? Off because the bat. this is the problem. We're going back and forth. Do they like me? Do they not? And then we have this conversation about a lot of guys want that. They need that emotional security. Right. And women give it to them right. without any kind of commitment. Right. And so, yeah, it's free therapy. It's, it's free um, security that they're getting, like the as, as a wife should provide for, Come and on. they'll just get it from all the different women without Come committing. On. Because what do they need? What do they need? Now? So talk about this generation, how men really just a lot. I would say a lot of single men is attention. Like, oh, mm. I recognize that there's ten of you to me to this one man, and so I can get attention from you. You, oh, I maybe don't like everything about you, but I like the way that you show up that for me. I like the way, like, good. you get how you get dressed up when we go on dates, or like they're taking from little bits of pieces, and we love that. And we love that. So, so dating yeah. multiple women without exclusively saying it, and like, we just talking. I'm going out with. Just, and I think I that's where the world has infiltrated dating. the church we're culture. And that's I think, why I I think want, that's where the world is, has infiltrated. Yes. Because there's no there's no intentionality. There's no um 100%. there's no sense of urgency. Um, it's very ambiguous. And I think that setting does play a part in how long this process goes because um, a study that's been consistent over the last like 50 years is that the majority of people meet their spouses either at work, church, or school. And so because you have that proximity, you can, you, you're already like, oh, I've, I've, you know, we talk at the coffee pot and I know they're, I've seen them when they get mad at work and I see their temperament. And so that can speed things up a bit. My, my dad met my stepmom at, at it's work. It's quality time. Exactly. It's, a, it's just a and, lot and of quality we have shared, time. We have shared, um, interests and things like that and so i think that that can and definitely you know shorten things shorten the process that's that can ooh, but why it's not happening in those and the, settings and yeah. that i'm telling yeah. you about like but i think people don't know they need like it's just not it's not like like i said some know. of the guys that y'all know i straight up call them from punk because they was like, I don't know how to approach them. And I was like, you being scared and you being a punk. Like, just go up and talk to them. But like, I think, stop so, I think some... Be a wingman. Help them. I think some some guys, because we're in the same proximities, Circle. we're hanging out with the same people, some of them are like, I want to know for sure that I like her. Outside because of. there's so That's many factors. We... Because we could ruin, we could ruin the friendship dynamic. We could ruin our friendship. Like, I think like we want to be a hundred. Respectfully, I don't need no homie and friends. I have a good solid, so a good solid core of yes. women. So, right, right. Okay, and, and that goes back to now with you outside of like a group setting. My guy, you got. We go together. My, no, 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 we go together. My guy, you gotta know that it's 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 more than I want to get to know you on a friendly. But that basis. goes back to what Marianne said about the the free being around a woman, a good woman for a for a man. Whether, and so you're giving out free therapy, you're giving out reassurance, wisdom, this and other. So my mentor um, um, had to talk to my 14 year old, uh, to Tamaya, about male friendships. She's like. You, you don't, don't want to do, and I, and I, I, I felt it, I understood it, but I didn't know how to, ver she verbalized it in an amazing way. We're going to hope, we hope to get them on here soon. But she said, even with male and female friendships at your age, don't give so much away. Don't talk so much. Don't tell so much. Save those things. Yes, you're young. Save them for your husband. You're giving pieces and pieces of yourself and emotions. God created it so that that sharing is what, is what strengthens and creates our bond. You're sharing and you're sharing, you're sharing, you're sharing with too many people and you're not keeping anything for your husband. So I love you, my brother in Christ, you know, you know, but there has to be boundaries. All these friendships could, could quite possibly be getting in the way of you finding your husband. That's why I don't and do it. Yes, and, the, and I do. I, this is a very unpopular opinion. But we had this conversation. I was like, I really don't necessarily. I think part of the problem we have today is that there is so much of, because you had made a comment. We had talked about this a while ago. Like, why is it grandparent generation was so much easier? I said, because if a man came up to you, you all have nothing to do with they were interested. Because men, did not just talk. men and women no weren't friends. Area. They're, they weren't nope. friends. Like, you, you're, we're friends, we're women, and men is your friends, we're men. And so if you were interested in a woman, clear thing. it was clear. It was very clear. But now we're like, oh, that's my God best friend. That's this. And I'm, I, I've said that, right? Like, I've said that. But, yeah, I really don't. I really truly believe, like, we, 
your friends are women. I mean, again, you can have friends with men. There's nothing wrong with that friendly. Mm -hmm. But like to have that closeness, like there's a lot of my guy friends that I'm really close with. We put up huge walls of boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, my other guy, he got married. I'm married. There's we will not talk the way we used to talk. Mm-hmm. very clear for a specific reason i think and it's a very unpopular opinion because there's a lot Absolutely. of people everything especially, is freedom so much i'm gonna text my wife at 11 30 talking about some you got a minute to talk you guys Damn. are married where you at dog that's, talk to me that's talk, marriage. Call me. I, that's, talk that's different that's marriage but what it's I'm different saying is like, even as a thing that's the reason why there's so much why does a man who's not your husband according you have access to you after a certain well time. that okay that's fair I don't have no men text me at 11. I don't. That's right. That's why I said the comment about game nights. I don't go to them because I feel like a lot of women go to them with under the pretense, oh, I get to be around my, my boo in my head tonight, or I hope so, or I hope so in your head, or I, feel, or I hope so and so is going to be there tonight with the hopes that maybe he'll say something to me tonight. If that man hasn't made it clear, he probably not interested. Yeah. So, but if you're not going to those game nights... What if your man is there? Yeah, it's like it's not okay. Yeah. okay. So I think is, at one point I was doing a lot of a right. lot of co-ed stuff. Right. So it's like this ain't leading me no right. more. I'll be respect. And you felt the need to I step back. I get married. I'm not interested in being nobody's friend or being right. part of the same game as the same people. With the same people. people. I don't want to do that. If I hold that's fair. That with new people, you might tell huh? Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. I know. This has been amazing. And uh, I really appreciate you guys' perspective Good selection, on babe. the weird perspective. And so, uh, man, I know we could be here for yeah. another hour right. talking about all the different things. Right. But I want to respect you guys' time. And I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy your Saturday. So some of y'all might have some dates or something. Who knows? But I want to let you guys get up out of here. Then I still have more work to do. So thank you. Thank you. This has been amazing. Uh, maybe we'll do a part two. So I do have plans, and I'm, I, I want to do this at a bigger space. But I want to have an actual panel um, mm-hmm. where we can have, you know, four to eight guys, four to eight Q&A? ladies, and then we we talk about it, it and we get like real. So Q&A. the yes. guys say something, you got a chance to respond to it. The ladies say something, the guys have a chance to respond to it. And then maybe we can, maybe we can. Um, uh, this is some, what we need make to some do. relationships happen. No, you know, no, no, I'm like, stand up if you want to get married. A talk. <laughs> A no, talk and maybe they'll win. Maybe Let's we can be have serious a, now. Maybe we can have a different churches. You need to find yes, different panels from yes, different churches yes. and invite all the twenties and thirties, forties, whatever, yeah, single people playing from around. those churches. And let's just do it. And so, like, huh? and so <laughs> Yeah. And so maybe we'll have a live audience. I'm still putting it all together, but you know, I'm thinking about show. making it happen and I would love to have you guys back on here. Stand up if you're and uh maybe me and my wife can host again. She does such an amazing job. I give it up for my wife. Thank y'all for waiting. Um, we'll talk about it. Uh, but uh, no, this was fun. This was needed. Guys, this was better than y'all. I'm just going to say it. But uh, we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll, we'll do it again or something. But um, thank you, ladies. Huh? Video? <laughs> Uh, this Ray was, was like, I'm carrying that show. <laughs> usually, usually the second time you do something, it's just a lot yeah, better. Exactly. And so I looked at it. I learned no. like some of the things that we could have <laughs> done better. <laughs> and I improved no. on it in this one. And then we had a great panel. We're also very uh, straightforward, blunt, honest. We're all very strong women. I yeah. picked, all four I of picked us. you guys for a reason. Right. I've been oh. scoping it out. I'm like, I, I need these people. Out. And I kept telling Derry, no. I'm like, I'm introverted. Yeah, I was like, you're not gonna get out of here. If you don't let the Lord use she, your introvert. She's the loudest person at Slam. It was like, That's girl, true. I'm That's still true. an introvert. It's close I'm to the same. I'm the same way. Because when my battery goes. But when I told you, once you start talking, you're not even gonna realize these cameras are here. All right, I gotta get my cheering. I gotta get my so, cheering. Thank you again. But um, it's been a wrap. Until the next video, my name is Derry. This is my amazing panel, my wife. I'll holla at y'all on the next one. Peace. Holla. <laughs>